2022 was eventful with a myriad of issues that tested the resilience of the Nigerian economy and the people alike. Some events of that year led to major policy decisions that are changing the course of a nation's development, and positively so. Thanks for joining us for another edition of the program. On Deadline 360 today, we are looking at how some major sectors performed in 2022, those that affected you directly and indirectly. I'm Omotara Mojala. Please stay. The year 2022 was challenging for both fiscal and monetary authorities globally as the Russian-Ukraine war thwarted their recovery efforts. Business and economy correspondent Leah Katung Babatone opens the program with a look at the Nigerian economy in the year 2022. It was a beautiful beginning. Projections were positively framed from the federal government to the Central Bank of Nigeria, Africa Development Bank, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, everything pointed to a great recovery run. But then, Russia happened. Supply chain disruptions again occurred to whittle down the modest recovery from a COVID-induced global slowdown. It was a tough year for policymakers as the home front faced security concerns in the farming regions, all theft along with slow output capacities and reduced income from the sector as well as flaws that left massive destructions across three quarters of the states of the Federation. Insurance penetration is still not optimal to cover for the losses, while petrol subsidies depleted a large chunk of the nation's revenues. The non-oil sector is the largest contributor to the nation's GDP, but oil revenue still remains king. We have uh, within our plans targets to cut down on on, on leakages and uh, enhance the use of automation. So we have every agency of government now operating on GFNs. We have uh, uh, got a very substantial compliance to moving the payroll of agencies of government on the IPPS. Of course, everybody knew the story of ASU. We've made some significant progress even, even based on that. that. All those things help to cut down on leakages that we used to have. We will continue to push the implementation of the TSA. Budget deficits have grown to nearly 5% of GDP, more than the 3% recommended by the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2007. Nigeria's debt stock during the year rose to 44.06 trillion naira in the third quarter of 2022, from 39.55 trillion naira, which it was as at the end of 2021. We saw other countries with a debt to GDP ratio of over 100%. Ours is 23, yet our debt service to revenue is uh, much higher than their own and higher than countries you would call your pay group, whether it's South Africa or Angola. So clearly, there's an issue with the revenue leg, and we have to keep talking about it. Inflation numbers rose for 10 straight months, driven primarily by rising food prices, setting 17 year record at 21.47% in November. Purchasing power was badly eroded. The extreme poor rose by 35 million, while the multidimensionally poor rounded up at 133 million. It is not about the money you receive. It is about how you spend your money and where you spend your money. And one thing that was also clear, in all of these uh, indicators and reports, is that 72 percent poor are in the rural areas. You know, and these are the areas where we don't have those hospitals. There are no schools, or if there are schools, there are no teachers. You know, so it's just a school in a, in name, and it is putting money to these areas you know, that we help to really alleviate uh, poverty and begin to engender. In response to the indices and growth concerns, the Central Bank of Nigeria came up with multiple policies and injected funds into the real sector to stimulate growth, create jobs and tame inflationary trends. A record four times did the CBN raise the benchmark policy rate in the course of the year, 
and redesigned the top three denominations of the nation's currency for the first time in two decades, just as the Naira lost almost 20% in the parallel exchange market, while the reserves and excess crude accounts depleted. If you want to see the success in your railroad operation, you have to try as much as possible to raise your rates to a level that is equal or possibly even higher than inflation so that your inflation rate must lag your policy rate. If your inflation rate does not lag policy rate or interest rates, you have to do so aggressively because it results in what we call negative interest rate, which is itself a disincentive to investment. Growth has slowed to 3.11, 3.54, and 2.25% in the first, second, and third quarter of 2022. Revenue generation hovers around 9% of GDP. Over 40% of the 2023 budget is expected to be financed by debt. Ahead of the new year, the World Bank and IMF have told Nigeria to do away with subsidies and rechannel the resources to the poor. Both chambers of the National Assembly have passed the 2023 budget along with the 2022 supplementary budget. Also passed is the 2022 finance bill to run along with the budget. The 2023 appropriation bill passed is 21.8 trillion naira. It is higher than the 20.5 trillion naira submitted. It is an election year and President Mahmoud Buhari insists he will leave the economy better then he met it. Lea Katumbaba today, NTA News. And in spite of floods that ravaged farmlands across the country in 2022, our next piece shows that agriculture did not do badly. From his close following of the sector, Musa Baba Liu now brings us details of how this all-important sector contributed to the nation's GDP. You see, the cost of production has increased. Therefore, a farmer, the, his product must, the price must be it must increase. Inflation and high cost of farming inputs made 2022 a challenging year for farmers alongside consumers of agricultural produce and products along the value chain. However, the growth and the contribution of the agricultural sector to the economy was positive during the year. In the first quarter of the year 2022, agriculture contributed 22.36% to the overall GDP. The sector grew by 3.54% year-on-year in red terms in the second quarter, showing an increase of 0.44% points. The agricultural sector topped the chart in a survey of seven sectors identified to have contributed to the Nigerian economy in the second quarter of 2022 having outperformed six other sectors comprising trade, uh, telecommunications, manufacturing, oil and gas, real estate, as well as finance and insurance. Also in the third quarter of the 2022, there was an increase of 0.14% points from the preceding quarter, which recorded a growth rate of 1.20%. The value of total trade in agricultural goods in the first quarter of 2022 stood at 644.94 billion naira. Most of the agricultural products were exported to Asia, Europe, and the Americas. In the second quarter of the year, agricultural exports accounted for 1.91% of total export value at 7.41 trillion naira. Nigeria exported agricultural goods worth 84.21 billion naira in the third quarter of 2022. This, the, the, the product of agriculture is now being consumed by so many other systems. The industries became consumers of food in terms of clothing, in terms of synthetic materials, in terms of medicine. Then again, the animals also now became competitors for grains, while the plants now require more of cow dung and other organic substances that are coming from animals. Now to top it all, the human population keeps on growing. Agricultural trade between Nigeria, 
US, Europe, Brazil and Mexico received a boost during the year on that review. US and Mexico lifted the ban imposed on some Nigerian agricultural produce. We use the period of the suspension to address the proximate cause of the suspension of exports. We have strengthened self-regulation mechanisms among farmers, optics, and exporters in order to deepen the culture of quality compliance. However, importation of produce such as rice, maize, poultry products, and fish declined in the year 2022. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Now, if there was any sector that made news headlines severally in 2022, it is education. And oftentimes, the academic staff union of universities as to what's the headliner. Abdullahi Musa Suleja relieves some defining moments in the eight-month-long tug of war between the union and government, as well as a few other remarkable moments in the sector. The Nigerian education sector for most part of 2022 was at the forefront of news owing to industrial action in back upon by members of the Academy Staff Union of Universities ASU. What started as a four-week warning strike on February 14th escalated to an eight-month strike. Chief of Staff to the President, religious, traditional, opinion leaders and concerned parties all were in. But to no avail. We can only end the strike when the issue in contentious are met by the federal government. One, implementing, signing, and implementing the agreement we have negotiated within the weeks. Two, the federal government challenged us when we said IPs was not working. Say, can you produce alternative? And finally, we passed issue with the federation fund. Areas of an allowance. What government implement this? We can even call our member that same day to come here and we look at it and suspend the strike. Eventually, on the 14th of October, after intervention by the leaders of the National Assembly, headed by the Speaker, Fenny Bajabia Miller, also suspended one of the longest strike in the history in Nigeria's education sector. I hope this one, this time around, there will not be any attempt by any positive or group to create something that will also make us uh, run into anything again. Despite the strike, the education sector recorded success to some extent in the following areas. Education policy, data and planning, infrastructural development, service delivery, human capital development, access to quality education and job creation. One of the greatest achievements we recorded in the education sector during the period under review for the development and launching of the e-learning website for all levels of our educational system. Apart from ease of access, this will also ensure that teaching and learning will continue seamlessly, even in the face of a pandemic or future strike. 2022, there was an awakening, I would say, because after COVID, COVID brought a lot of change. It opened the eyes of educators to see the many possibilities that learning can still take place outside the four walls of the classroom. And since then, that trend has continued. So far, the present administration has expended over 6 trillion naira in capital and recurrent expenditure in the sector in the last seven years. This is in addition to intervention from Tedfan and Ubeck, who golf over 2 trillion naira, aside investment from state and the private sector at all levels of education system. The country partnership with the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, and the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FTDO of the United Kingdom, resulted in the enrollment of 1.5 million girls in schools in the north. Two unions were registered, the Nigerian Association of Medical and Dental Academics, NAMDA, and the Congress of University Academics, KONWA, for enhanced relations. Let it be noted that Section 3, Subsection 2, of the trade unions as CAP T14, laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, gives the Honorable Minister of Labor and Empo Employment powers to regroup an existing trade union of workers or employers. They are not a legal union of workers with rights and privileges. The student loan bill passed by the National Assembly is awaiting the signature of the President. What is signed into law? The Act will create the Nigerian Education Bank, which will have the power to award student loan. Abdullah Musa Sileja, NTA News.
Now let's go to the power sector where correspondent Joshua Ojito reports that it was a mixed bag of events in 2022. His highlight of the gains and challenges that shaped the sector in 2022 is here presented. 2022, an eventful year for the power sector with interventions across the value chain to meet the growing demand of electricity consumers in the country. With less than 5,000 megawatts of power generated, which is inadequate for a country of more than 200 million people, federal government sustains interventions in 2022 in the generation arm of the value chain, with the Zungeru hydropower project near completion, expected to add 700 megawatts to the national grid. We'll come here with Mr. President to come and celebrate the commissioning of 700 megawatts of carbon-free electricity into the, uh, uh, the national grid. A deal for another hydropower plant to be built in Makudi, Benue State, sealed with committee for the project inaugurated. The transmission arm of the value chain receives more attention in 2022 as the transmission company of Nigeria acquires more infrastructure, the highest since privatization of the sector in 2013. More new substations like that of Bichi in Kano State, Akure, Oka, and one out of the five ongoing substations projects in Abuja, among others, completed, while other old substations upgraded. The transmission company is a go between uh, the conveyor, so they will, it will improve on, you know, transmission or cascading of power between generation at the upstream and transmission in the, in the middle down to the downstream. And the beauty of it is that uh, system protective devices help to uh, enhance HSC, air safety and environment, and the safety of uh, the grid infrastructure. So uh, reactors, uh, transformer for load uh, dispatch from dispatch center down to the uh, distribution subsector. All the equipment that have been uh, uh, procured uh, they are in the, is, is the right way to go. Rival of first set of six mega transformers under the federal government Siemens deal in 2022 excite electricity consumers who are optimistic that the intervention will be a game changer in the sector. Interventions in renewable energy and rural electrification continue in 2022 with more rural areas, federal universities and healthcare centers connected with solar home systems. It's solar connections of 5 million. That was what the NESP pro program had. And this includes mini grids, solar cabins, solar home systems. And so it's all put together. We have been facing a lot of challenges on the electricity. We so much have appreciated the federal government, federal government that they brought this to our environment. However, the gains of the sector are not without challenges as commercial banks take over ownership of five distribution companies for failure to meet up loan obligations acquired during privatization in 2013. Also, challenges of metering, energy theft, liquidity crisis and grid disturbances persist in 2022 with industrial unrest by staff of the Transmission Company of Nigeria which disrupt power supply nationwide. Projecting into the new year, industry players and consumers are hopeful of stable electricity market that will translate to longer hours of power supply. Joshua Ojitu NTA News. Now, a little something to keep you smiling and in some sense reminisce. Some may also bring tears to your eyes. Next, Kendi ADBC celebrates the wins in the midst of challenges in the entertainment industry and what 2023 holds for the sector. <laughs> The year 2022 came with a ray of light to lift the bloom imposed on the entertainment industry by the COVID-19 pandemic. With a partial and eventual total lift of restrictions on public gathering, the creative industry bloomed again. Entertainment enthusiasts believe the pandemic launched the industry into another level as content were judged to be top-notch and could compete favorably on the global scene. 
Movie producers looked inward with their stories, most of which projected the true African values. Movies like King of Thieves, Ainla, Anikulako, Eleshinoba all had perfect blend of the Nigerian culture. We are evolving on a daily basis, and that's a good one, which means if we put more energy and more strength into the movie industry, our industry will be something that the whole world will come to appreciate. I think it's, it's, it's an inspiring year for a lot of people. In spite of the economic downturn at times, we've seen the entertainment industry has moved ahead. And I think in 2023, after the peaceful elections in 2023, we'll have a better creative industry for, for all. Jimmy Odukoya is one Nigerian actor who made headlines in the year 2022 with his performance in the movie Woman King. 2022 would not be complete without mentioning one of the most talked about movie, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which had its African premiere in Lagos, Nigeria, graced by the cast and crew. We've never seen ourselves represented in this way before, and it's about time that we see it and we embrace it and we love it. So the pride that I saw African black people across the world, not just here, have, and even people who aren't, who aren't black, just connected to it so richly. That to me is, um, it's everything. Tunes emanating from Nigeria have become a global sensation. While Nigerian music stars are enjoying international collaborations, they're also breaking new grounds by barging more awards on the global scene. Bonaboy, for instance, outperformed his last year's wins with more honors to his name. Thames is also smashing the ceiling, making the female artist proud. And then 2022 has been a remarkable year for entertainment, uh, Nigerian entertainment around the globe, especially um, permeating culture, um, dictating and, and ruling the charts, you know, um, collaborations with, you know, a, 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 anyone, everyone, you know, uh, everyone wants a taste of African and Nigerian. If you're talking Africa, the online skit makers kept Nigerians glued to their streaming devices with hilarious contents. Taking a cue from Pataranki's song Celebration, which made reference to giving accolades while still alive. The entertainment industry did just that as they gathered to celebrate veteran actor Lulu Jacobs on his 80th birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you all for all the support. Thank you all for the well wishes. Another notable moment was the fairy tale wedding of Nollywood sweetheart Rita Dominic. The Super Eagles were definitely missed at this year's World Cup, where the Moroccans made African proud. But as Nigerian the carry last, the country was present at Qatar with Davido adding his music talent to the World Cup music album and performing at the finale. Also, Pataranki and Chris Daniel performed at the FIFA Fan Festival. Just as there were high moments in 2022, the entertainment industry would not be complete without scandals and lyrical battles on social media. The creative industry also experienced losses, amongst which were Hada Ame, Rico Suave, Ifain Adeleke, son of the video, Sami Ukosu, as well as Osinachi, and many more. Based on Statista's data, total revenue in the entertainment industry is projected to reach $29.35 billion in the year 2022. The industry did not just entertain, but also created jobs for teaming Nigerian youth. In Lagos, Ken Day at ABC for Deadline 360. And with that entertainment review by Ken Day at ABC, we conclude this edition of Deadline 360. More reviews next week. Please keep a date with us. I am Amotala Omojala. God bless Nigeria.